This is the story of a very brilliant man, a genius, whose name was Daedalus. He was able to look at a problem and think about it until he figured out the answer. Once, however, Daedalus faced a challenge he wished he did not have to solve. King Minos of Crete was upset with Daedalus for helping the young hero Theseus defeat the Minotaur and escape from Crete with Minos's daughter, Princess Ariadne. The king had no proof or evidence that Daedalus had helped them, but he believed that only Daedalus was smart enough to have done it, since he had also created the labyrinth. So King Minos announced, Daedalus, you helped them escape, so now I will lock you up in turn. And since there were two of you responsible for their escape, one of whom was my own daughter, you shall share your imprisonment with your son Icarus. The king was too smart to lock Daedalus in an ordinary cell, however, for he feared the genius might escape. He commanded guards, lock up Daedalus and Icarus in that great stone tower that overlooks the ocean cliffs. There's only one window at the top of the tower and one door which we will lock. Even if they escape through the window, there's nothing below but sharp rocks and raging ocean tides. So the father and son were locked away. Twice a day, soldiers unlocked the door to deliver food or take away the dishes. On one of those occasions, Daedalus sent a message by the soldiers to King Minos. If we must live out our lives here, at least give us some books to read and candles by which to read them after dark. Minos saw no harm in that and agreed, but he should have known better, for Daedalus had a plan. He and Icarus would set breadcrumbs on the sill or the horizontal piece at the bottom of the tower's high window to attract seabirds. Over a period of months, the birds lost their fear of Daedalus and his son and would allow the two men to pick them up. The father and son began to pluck feathers from their wings, though not so many as would hurt the birds or keep them from flying. He and Icarus hid the feathers under their beds, along with some wax from each candle the soldiers supplied, until after several years Daedalus told his son, now we have what we need in order to escape. Daedalus began to unravel threads from the blankets in their tower room. Using the flames of the candles for heat, he melted and shaped the wax they had saved, inserted into it the feathers they had hidden, and tied it all with thread. Icarus's eyes lit up. You're making us wings! Daedalus smiled. If we cannot walk from our prison, we will fly. Come, hold that candle closer to soften this wax so I can bend it. It took several days to finish the work until one morning the two sets of wings were ready. Daedalus had studied the movements of the birds and knew where the currents of air blew near their seaside tower. Currents are strong flows of air or water moving in a certain direction. He carefully taught Icarus what he knew, adding, We will land at that harbor over there, remove our wings, and sail away in one of the boats anchored there. By the time King Minos knows we are gone, we will be far from Crete. However, my son, follow me as I ride the winds safely down. If we are not careful and we fly too high, the sun's heat could melt the wax in our wings and plunge us down into the sea. Our friends the birds need not fear this, but we are only borrowing their skills. I understand, father, replied Icarus. They strapped on their wings and waited as the sun began to rise over the sea. Below their tower were dangerous rocks and crashing waves. Daedalus worried that they might not make it. He thought over every detail and then told his son, It is time to regain our freedom. Come! Stepping up to the window, he drew a deep breath and leaped outward, and his wings worked. The air lifted him and held him. Looking back over his shoulder, he saw his son leap from the tower. Icarus laughed out loud at the sheer joy of flying. 
Lifting and dipping the tips of his wings, he turned and swirled, delighting in the wonder of it all. Forgotten in the moment was his father's warning. As Daedalus glided gracefully down toward the harbor, Icarus thought, I wonder if I can make this kind of curve or that. And he rode the winds higher and higher and farther and farther out over the water. Daedalus looked back for him, but Icarus was not following behind. Eyes wide with fear, Daedalus called, Icarus, come down! But the boy shouted, Look, father! and continued his tricks in the air until all of a sudden he saw a feather loosen and drop from one of his wings. He realized that he had flown too high. The growing heat from the morning sun was melting the wax. Desperately or wildly with a sense of panic and need, Icarus tried to turn and follow his father's path, but the warming air currents carried him higher. The feathers began dropping from his wings, first one at a time and then in clumps. Father, help! But Daedalus could not turn and rise fast enough to help. He could only watch. Too many feathers had fallen out and the wings could no longer support Icarus. He plummeted or fell straight down, down, down into the sea. Daedalus, weeping, reached the harbor, took a boat, and sailed off to safety.